Well, here I am in Tour France in my uh, small but nicely appointed little apartment, my little Airbnb. And uh, in theory, it's possible, although statistically unlikely, that many of you have noticed that I haven't posted a video in a while. Uh, it's because I decided to take a little vacation. Um, so don't worry, this isn't going to be a vacation video. I mean, it may put up something later, but for now, uh, this is actually more of like a, a victory lap video because over the past like year and a half two years I've, I've actually been putting in a lot of work to be able to monitor and access all my technology and stuff at home remotely so that i could do a vacation like this and still be able to maybe make a video like this i mean in theory so long as i have good internet access and i'm looking at you florence italy i was not able to do much there uh, I do realize, by the way, that I'm, I'm speaking kind of softly. It's because I'm I'm in an old building in France, and it does not have great sound insulation, and so I don't want to be a huge bother to anybody in the units above, below, or around me because uh, you can hear you can hear stuff. So uh, trying to be considerate. So that's why it may sound a little soft. Um, but if you're watching this video, that means that all the stuff I did has worked, and I'm pretty proud of that because if you're watching this video you have to understand um, I'm in France and this video will be edited and produced on my computer back in the US by me from here while I'm you know walking around looking at castles and maybe watching some race cars flying by eating croissants you know um, I mean it is France isn't it That's pretty good and the nice thing for me is that it requires very minimal third-party cloud stuff. Now, there are a couple of services that I do use third-party access to. So even though the services are hosted on my server, uh, the security and stuff, I let somebody else handle that, and I am paying for that. So I just wanted to, like I said, make this video to kind of show how all these various elements come together to work and you know maybe for the few of you that have you know been following the channel for a while you'll see how this thread has actually been in a lot of those past videos working towards what I'm now kind of able to do which is to say there's not really going to be a lot of new stuff in this video so if you're somebody that's interested in like remote work or like digital nomad type stuff which by the way, is not what I'm doing. I am just on vacation. I'm not moving or trying to do my life from somewhere else. But if you're interested in those kind of things, you might find this interesting if you haven't watched those other videos. So just to get into it, like one of the first things whenever you're on a trip that you worry about is security. So the first thing I'll touch on is my home security stuff because like a couple years ago, I had a neighbor that had their car stolen out of their driveway and I realized at that point in time, I needed better than the wise cams that I had up on my front and back doors because they just they're not very good. And so I started uh, installing a bunch of access cameras and they run on PoE, so not Wi-Fi or anything that can be jammed. They're all powered directly from a network switch so I can actually put my entire like server and home network on a battery backup, which will also power my security cameras. And so they can't be disconnected by purely turning the power off the house. And, you know, I went with Axis. They're, they're a commercial grade security company uh, for the hardware, even though it is very expensive. One of the big things is, you know, when you buy the kind of cheaper Asian manufactured cameras, there are some concerns about security and potential backdoors and what access they may retain. Um, you can do a lot to, to prevent that and mitigate that. I'm not saying that you have to go the way I went, but with Axis, that is. Uh, a lot lower of a concern because my cameras are actually made in the EU. They're made in Poland. Uh, they do make some of their cameras in Asia. I've got some that I'm not using. They're made in Thailand. So with that, that allows me to keep an eye on the house. I can look and watch, you know, possums and raccoons come through the backyard and set off notifications. All the cameras actually have on-device AI for for object detection and peoples and cars and stuff so I don't get a bunch of false positives. Uh, I was able to reduce the cost quite a bit by buying stuff off of eBay. So m most of the stuff was new, but it wasn't uh, from a supplier. It was from uh, somebody had bought one and maybe decided not to use it. And that does reduce the cost quite a bit. Now, this is the first thing that I'll mention is not purely self-hosted. I do run their server software and do my own NVR. 
but in order to access it with my phone via their app, I do use their cloud service for that. So even though all my video stays local and they don't have access to it necessarily, um, whenever I get you know push notifications and stuff like that, it, it does go through their server for that. The cost of access is mostly in the hardware, but they do charge per device for the license to their software if you self-host. And for my system with the number of devices, that ends up being less than $100 a year, which is actually on par with most of the stuff that I've seen like Blue Iris and stuff like that. So it's not actually that expensive to keep the system running. Again, notwithstanding the devices themselves, the hardware is expensive. But the trade-off is I'm not getting Asian manufactured devices that I do have to worry about them being compromised as much. Again, it, there's nothing that's perfect, but it does lower those concerns using a company like Axis. And um, the only point where they touch, again, is handling the authentication between my server and the cloud service of notifying my phone and stuff like that. So again, not totally self-hosted, but you know, the, the big main stuff, um, all the video is kept local, um, all the devices, I have to manually update all that stuff. They don't have access to it. Um, they can't get into my system. It, it's, it's a nice setup um, that, that I really like, and it allows me to do a lot of stuff remotely and control everything remotely if I want to. So the, the next thing that you worry about is like disasters. What happens if something goes wrong at the house? And so in order to monitor all the HVAC and like check for power outages and stuff like that, I, I just use Home Assistant. And this is the next thing that is not purely 100% all local because I do pay Nebucasa like 60 bucks a year for basically the same thing. The uh, integrated kind of authentication service for their app. Um, and to me, that's a great deal because it also helps pay for development costs. So Nabucasa develops Home Assistant, even though it's open source, they're the main developer. And um, being able to support that, I think is, is great. And so even though it does eliminate it from being considered totally self-hosted, um, it takes care of a lot of hassle and it helps fund development of the software, so I'm cool with that. You, you could always just VPN control both of these systems, by the way, my home security system. I don't have to use their stuff. Um, I could do it differently and, and run a VPN connection and all that. Home Assistant, I don't have to use Nabucos' stuff. I could just do it all over a VPN, but um, it's much easier just to let them all manage that. But um, with Home Assistant, obviously, like I said, I can monitor the temperature in my house and make sure that the air conditioner is all working. I've got uh, the leak detectors that I built in a couple of strategic places so I can see if the water heater leaks or if something in the kitchen breaks. Um, I can check for power outages, which would affect the refrigerator and all that other stuff. And, you know, with all that monitoring stuff, I still have a friend of mine that goes over and checks on the house occasionally just in case there's something that I miss. But um, that really, you know, handles the big scary what if security and then what if something disaster strikes the house. Um, and so that's kind of how I manage that. Again, all that's hosted on virtual machines on my home server. Now, the next thing to get into more like, what do I actually use it? That's more of the monitoring side. What am I doing? Uh, well, you look, you're on vacation. You're gonna take a lot of photos, a lot of videos, and I have you know, gigabytes and gigabytes of, of photos and videos that I've taken. And you, know, you want backups of that stuff. And if you're just trying to manage it on a vacation, you've got hard drives and SD cards and all the stuff you're trying to manage, right? Well. Um, I've got a NAS set up on my server at home and I've got Docker set up and I use Caddy and I use Filestash and that allows me to have web interfaces with my SMB shares. I also do have WireGuard set up on my Unify uh, Dream Machine so I can access my home network. I can access my NAS directly or via Filestash. It's got a web interface so I can do everything through that. And so what I've been doing is every couple days, I just move all the photos and videos that I've taken and put them on my NAS. Um, I also do have a SSD with me that I've been backing stuff up to, but that keeps me multiple copies and backups. And I've got, you know, RAID on the NAS at home. So everything's pretty well duplicated, um, but it gives me a way to access that stuff remotely. I can pull it up on my phone. I can pull it up on my computer. Um, it, it makes it very easy. And if I want to do a video like this and edit things, well, if I've got good internet and I've got all that stuff already uploaded, it's 
accessible by my home computer as well. And so, you know, that leads me into the next step, which is, you know, for this video, to edit and create this video, I can't really do that from here with what I've got. I, I travel with a Microsoft Surface. I'm not going to be editing much on that thing. And my home server also, it doesn't have a GPU. It doesn't have the power really to do video editing. So I wanted to be able to edit videos on my home PC. Um, and so in order to make that happen, it was a little bit more of a hassle. Um, I, I made some videos on accessing Wayland desktops remotely and how that's kind of wonky right now because there's no way to access a Linux Wayland desktop without having already logged into the desktop, right? You, you break security by doing auto log on and so it was just kind of a pain. Um, so because I want to use my desktop because it's the thing that I've got that has the horsepower to really do all the video editing, I needed to set up some things, right? So number one, I need to be able to wake the computer up. So I made sure to have just rock solid uh, wake on LAN supports so that I can wake my PC up from anywhere. And I, I've got like a, uh, a home assistant button that I can wake the computer up. And I can also do it through the Jet KVM. So the Jet KVM allows me to access the computer's display and mouse and keyboard inputs. And it's a very fault tolerant access method. And the reason is, is because the Jet KVM doesn't run on the computer at all. I can access the computer just right after boot. And so I can get into the BIOS if I need to, or if something during the operating system startup has a problem, I, I can do stuff about that. I can even boot into Windows if I want, right? Um, it doesn't just have to be my Linux desktop. I can do kind of whatever I want with it. Um, and that gets around that Wayland issue really, really well because with the Jet KVM, I can bring the system up, I can go ahead and log in, and I don't have to worry about messing with Wayland security problems um, with that because it's it's not running on the computer. It's a totally separate little mini computer running. Um, the Jet KVM, you know, security might be a concern, except for my Jet KVM doesn't have access to the internet. Um, I VPN into my home network, and then I can access the Jet KVM locally within that VPN network. And again, I manage that with WireGuard. So the Jet KVM is really just there to get me into the desktop and to help me navigate any uh, pre-startup, pre-desktop problems. But it doesn't have audio, and that's not going to be very useful for multimedia work, right? Um, so for that, I have Sunshine. And so on my desktop PC back at home, as soon as it boots up, it starts up Sunshine, which creates a video feed of my desktop environment. And I can take my Microsoft Surface and fire up Moonlight. And since I'm already on the VPN, because I've already been accessing the Jet KVM, uh, I will have local access to my desktop through Moonlight and Sunshine. And that gives me a, a very low latency control video feed uh, with video, audio, and everything that I need to do editing very simply, right? And then I can use that to edit and render video like this one. And so that's kind of it, right? Um, I think in some ways this video is just kind of to show off that, hey, hey, this works. This actually works. I can monitor my house. I can keep an eye on everything. I can fire up my computer. I can edit videos. I can manage all my files. I can do work. Um, I can do stuff that requires me to physically be in my house in some ways because, you know, I'm not going to advocate for anything illegal, but um, there are some video services that don't like VPNs and they will force you to enable uh, GPS to authenticate wherever you are. And here's the thing. Uh, if I run those on my desktop PC, they are being accessed from my house. And then via, you know, sunshine, uh, they are just being encoded into a video feed that I control. And so those third party systems never see a VPN because they're not running through a VPN. Uh, so there's a lot of kind of advantages to having this set up, and, and I've been pretty happy with the way it's worked, and I have not ran into problems, and that was the thing, you know, on this trip I was worried of, what are the things that I haven't thought of that are going to pop up, and it turns out 
nothing. It has all worked the way I thought it would before I left. Um, so the nervousness that I had about what's going to fail, what's going to be the unforeseen problem hadn't happened. Everything has worked the way I wanted it to. Um, again, the only thing you really need to make sure of is that wherever you are, whenever you're traveling, does have good internet because that's been the one weak link has been uh, some very well-developed cities. You might be in an Airbnb that just doesn't have great internet. And if you're trying to move videos around, that's a problem. Uh, but otherwise, this has been great. So, you know, I think that's going to wrap this up. I don't want to belabor the point. Just, again, maybe a bit of a victory lap video, but I, I felt like I wanted to make it. Um, if you got any feedback, comments, or questions, feel free to leave them down below. And as always, I appreciate your time.